Hi friends, do you remember this video in which I completely copied the Chinese welding inverter? If not, then I advise you to review, because today we'll be stealing from China on large scale, part 2. So one day I went to the store and bought a Chinese welding inverter for 50 bucks, ultra budget but quite good in circuitry. At home, I tortured and tested it for a couple of days, and as a result, this baby showed quite decent results. In sum, I decided to copy it completely. After a few days of painstaking work, I had all the printed circuit boards. The circuit that I created based on the boards and the full characteristics of the transformers. Then, I ordered the boards at the factory, but there were some problems at the customs of my country, and I was forced to refuse the boards. Then, I ordered through an intermediary in the person of Andrew. Finally, I received a bunch of small boards for this inverter, such as a control board, an auxiliary power board, and a current adjustment board. I assembled and tested all these nodes a couple of days. I received the power board a couple of months after receiving small boards, and, finally, it became possible to assemble this long-term construction and enjoy the result of the work done. Look at these cool factory boards. They ordered that company GLC who did their best reliable solder mask plated through holes. By the way, this company is engaged not only in manufacture of printed circuit boards, but also in stencils for SMD soldering, industrial 3D printing and even assembling ordered circuits. You can be sure of the quality of manufacture and humane prices are the strong point of the company. Of course, the costs of shipping goods from China have been very disappointing lately. But let's hope that the logistics will soon come to their senses and everything will be just as before. Although maybe I'm too optimistic. You will find the link to the GLC PCB website in the description. Let's continue. Why I copied this particular inverter already told in the first part. Wielding is compact, light, budget, very good maintainability and output current of 100 to 120 amps. In my version, I will make it so that it painlessly gives out 120 amps, which is enough for domestic needs you can weld with 3mm electrode. I also made deep options for printed circuit boards. They also received, collected and tested. In general, I am preparing a new project of a modified and more powerful version of this welding. I hope it will not be delayed as much as this version. Let's go back to our device. Here is a circuit in front of you. How it works and what parts it consists of. In short, this is a half-bridge mains inverter based on two powerful IGBT transistors controlled through a galvanic isolation transformer, which is definitely a plus. This transformer, in turn, is controlled by a MOSFET driver which amplifies the signal from the PWM chip. It is on PWM that all control is built. Very good and advanced PWM controller SG3525 is used here. The inverter has a soft start, a separate auxiliary source that feeds the control system, a soft start relay and a fan. Moreover, the fan and the 24 volt relay are powered from a separate transformer winding, which is also a plus. The control system is powered by a voltage of 12 to 15 volts from another winding of the same transformer. The auxiliary source is low power, 10 to 15 watts, but this is enough. It built on a specialized LNK626 chip. It has voltage stabilization, current protection, terminal protection and other goodies. The welding inverter itself is also equipped with a separate protection against short circuits, which is pretty good for a budget inverters. The input current transformer is responsible for protection. The adjustment of the wielding current is carried out according to the output, which certainly increases the accuracy of setting the output current. A shunt is used as a current sensor. Data from the shunt through the feedback line comes to the control board with PWM. It's changing the duty circle of the pulses by increasing or reducing the time the power transistors are in one of the two states. If the transistors are open less time, the output current is small, if more, large. Of course, we can manually adjust the current value. There is overheating protection which is built on the second channel of the operational amplifier. The sensor is a thermistor. Protection of over-limited current. 
This node will save the power transistors if, for example, the current feedback is faulty and the current isn't limited. It works like this. The greater the output current, the greater the voltage on the secondary winding of the current transformer, and the greater the voltage drop across the current sensor. If the output current is greater than the protection trip current, the voltage drop across the current sensor is sufficient to open the specified Zener diode. Breaking through, it will open the thyristor, which dampens the unlocking voltage at the base of the previously indicated transistor. Next, another transistor will open, blocking the operation of the microcircuit. To reset this protection, the inverter must be disconnected from the mains for a few seconds and then turned on again. The device is equipped with a soft start system. It is necessary to limit the initial charge current of the input capacitors. The soft start relay and the thermistor are responsible for this. When the source is connected to mains, the capacitors are first charged through the thermistor. Their charge current is limited by the resistance of the thermistor. As soon as sufficient voltage appears on the capacitors to operate the auxiliary source, it starts. Voltage appears on the secondary windings of the transformer, which leads to the operation of the relay. The relay contacts close, and now all input current flows through the closed relay contacts. The inverter also has an electronic soft start. When the control system is started, the microcircuit increases the duration of the control pulses smoothly. The indicated capacitor is responsible for the time. This option eliminates the formation of shock currents and softens the transistor's operation mode when starting the device. The device also has dead time. The specified resistor is responsible for the dead time. This time is needed to give the driver the opportunity to completely discharge the gate capacitance of the power switches, ensuring their reliable locking. Components In the original Chinese inverter, the manufacturer used three diode assemblies of 40 amps 200 volts as an output rectifier. This is the minimum that is needed for a 100-120 amps device. At first, I decided to put instead of them STTH6003, 60 amps, 300 volts. It would be very fat for such a kit, but along the time they ran out, at least the original ones, so I decided to put others. VS85EPF12 Once a kind subscriber sent me a bunch of such diodes, and since they are there, and there are a lot of them, why not to use here? These are single fast diodes for 85 amps and with reverse voltage as much as 1200 volts from the eminent Vichy. At the same time, they have a drop at a current of 85 amps about 1.36 volts. When compared with STTH6003, then at the same currents on the finished rectifier, STTH we will have more heat losses than using these Vichy diodes. That is, the latter are much better. So, I decided to set them. For such a rectifier, at least two diodes are needed, one in each shoulder. The problem was that these diodes are in a different package and you can't just put them on the board. So I had to come up with something. But everything is reliable. The current is taken from the radiator. Here I tried to do everything to provide good conditions for this. The substrates of the diodes are the cathode. A copper bus was additionally screwed to them. Transistors The manufacturer of the device used IGBT transistors, BT40T60, 40 amps, 600 volts, and they are pretty good, but next to such luxurious diodes they wouldn't look very good. I have the original FGH60 and 60, 60 amps, 600 volts lying around. Yes, this is too much, but it is for ourselves, so we do all the best. The input rectifier was originally 25 amps, small. Now it's 50 amps. As a result, I can say that at current prices, only the diodes and transistors that I inserted are more expensive than a new such device from the store. Not just more expensive, but many times more expensive. This is called unreasonable waste of funds. Of course, it would also be worthwhile to put capacitors at the input at least 680 microfarads each, but
but for now, let it be so. Transformers There are four transformers here. A galvanic isolation transformer, a current transformer, an auxiliary source transformer and a power transformer. Their characteristics are in front of you. Winding is a rather dreary process because you need to observe phasing, certain rules for the distribution of windings and so on. Here I only note that in the case of a power transformer, the approach was serious. Firstly, it is wound completely with copper leads wire, and secondly, both windings are more powerful than a factory transformer. Besides, the factory one was wound with an aluminium single core wire. Mounting I tried to minimize the possible formation of breakdowns between power components and radiators, so everything here is isolated as much as possible. The pins of the components are in heat shrink, the lower parts of the radiators are insulated with captain tape in several layers. In addition to tinning, I reinforced almost all power polygons with single core copper wires. The finished and tested inverter was coated on both sides with a triple layer of insulating acrylic varnish. Disadvantages This inverter doesn't have such features as arc force, hot start and electrode anti-stack. But some of these options can be added and in the large version all these improvements will be introduced. Small heat sinks The fan is quite efficient, but still the heat sinks are small, both for the transistors and for the rectifier. In fairness, it is worth pointing out that now less heat will be released on them, because installed power components have fewer losses than original components from the factory. In any case, I believe that taking into account the size of the inverter, it is as functional as possible. Any other attempts to improve something are already overkill. This is a small inverter for household tasks and its main feature is its lightweight and compact size. Tests Idle mode voltage of the inverter is about 60 volts. The maximum current that it gave out on the ballast was 110-120 amps. You can get a larger current, for this there is a corresponding trimmer and I am sure that the power parts will pull up to 140 amps, but I won't, let it work calmly. Regarding welding itself, you know, I'm not a welder at all, but I try to show what the device can do. To do this, I even bought a mask, all sorts of different electrodes that were in the store, including electrodes for cast iron, well, just to see how they are set on fire. The electrodes are mainly 2 and 3 mm, welded currents of 80 to 120 amps. I note that the device burns the electrodes even at minimum currents, although the arc often breaks. You can safely work with currents from 40 to 50 amps. I burned 4-5 electrodes at maximum currents and the inverter turned off. Only after that I realized that all this time it worked without the top cover and therefore the cooling didn't work properly. The device went into overheating protection, even the light was on. Ok, we can see that protection works properly. It seems that I even improved my quality of welding. In a word, the device works, sets it on fire and the rest is a matter of skill. Here is an attempt to cut metal at maximum current. I am certainly glad that the copying was successful and no mistakes were made. Given the number of components about 150, it is quite possible to make a mistake somewhere or overlook something. But everything worked out. It's far from the most complex device I've built, but still the most complex I've copied. Development prospects As I said earlier, I am preparing a more powerful and modified version of this inverter with a more serious components. It will be on deep components. 
The control boards are ready and tested. Only the power boards need to be made. I think that this inverter is ideal for conversion into a semi-automatic. Nothing prevents adding another OP amp, which will monitor the voltage at the output of the inverter through a divider and work with a PWM controller through a single feedback line. In general, it is possible to organize voltage stabilization with the ability to adjust and stabilize the current, so it's worth working on this direction. All that has been said is just thinking out loud. In real life, the fate of all projects and their further development is only in your hands. If the viewer is interested, there will be a continuation. If not, the project will be closed. Therefore, please rate and make comments on this video. Share it with your friends. This is very important. Many projects like this one never pay off because a lot of time, nerves and a lot of money have been invested in them. And your positive comments and constructive criticism are the only incentive to create new videos. In the description for this video you will find the complete archive of the project with all printed circuit boards, circuits and other things. It's free. Anyone can download and repeat. There will also be links to my other resources, which you can also subscribe to if you wish. That's all today and I say bye until we meet again. I wish everyone peace and health. With you, as always, was Kassian TV.